Toastmasters and honored guests, welcome to the Toastmasters Leadership Institute and Educational Seminar. To make sure that you are in the right place, this session is called The Four Acts of Your Good Speech. Before we begin, I would like to cover a few housekeeping rules. First, please turn off all cell phones or place them on silent. Second, if you haven't already done so, please sign the sign-in sheet and, and folks can indicate it to each other who still needs that. And then at the end of the session, please remember to complete the evaluation form, and the, those will be collected by me at the end of the session. <coughs> Let's introduce our speaker. If you've ever wanted to learn a simple, effective, and easy way to give a good speech, that engages, informs, and entertains your audience, you are not alone. The next speaker has had the same challenges in finding out how to create a great speech. Finally, with the help of his mentor, he came to learn about the four acts and how to apply them in, in his speaking. Once you start using the four acts, you will instantly connect with your audience, keep your interest in your topic, Give your audience a clear starting point and motivate your audit audience to do what you are talking about. And now, please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Tim Wilson. Have you ever heard a really good speech? Mark Brown did one right now, right? You ever hear a good speech and thought, that's a good speech? Maybe even thought, I'd like to do a good speech like that. <laughs> ever thought like that? A few of you. The rest of you are in the wrong room. <laughs> I know what you mean, because many years ago I thought I wanted to learn how to create a good speech. I wanted to learn how to learn how to grow, develop, and build as a speaker. And I looked around for possibilities, and I thought about, well, what do I want to do? Is, well, I wanted to join a club. It should be international. It should have a lot of friendly people. All around Chicagoland, easy to get to. So I finally decided to come to? Toastmasters. Toastmasters, you bet, Toastmasters. I came to Toastmasters, I discovered the Common Communication Manual. Did you hear of this? Mm -hmm. You know what this is? Book about, you know, so many pages. Okay. If you've been in Toastmasters for a while, probably you know the Comic Communication Manual. If you're new to Toastmasters, the Comic Communication Manual is a, a book. It separates you ten different speeches. Each speech you develop a different speaking skill. So you start basically talking, the law way up inspiring your audience along the way, learning things like gestures, vocal variety, getting to the point. So I thought, this is good stuff, right? Good stuff. Yeah, so I started going through the copy communication mail. Like, this is great, this is wonderful. And I kept thinking, but, but there's something missing. But it's good stuff. So I, I kept on going through it. And it was really wonderful. I kept on working through it, right? So there's something missing. It just kept bothering me and bothering me. One day it hit me. I know it was missing. This manual, wonderful though it is, is a lot about delivery skills. Gestures, vocal variety, getting to the point, those sort of things. Now, these are the things you do after you create a good speech. Hey, I got a good speech. I'm going to go out and deliver it. Here's how you deliver it, which is wonderful. But it still raised the question in my head. Yeah, how do you do that? How do you create that good speech? But it was great stuff. So I kept on working through it. And I worked through it. It took me about two years. Now, no haters now. It took me two years. <laughs> and after two years, I thought, this is great. And I want to discover more. I want to really learn how to create that good speech. See what else Toastmasters has. So I discovered the advanced communication manuals. And if you haven't done these yet, they're mainly about speaking topics. So whereas the common communication manual is made about how to deliver things, the advanced communication manual is about speaking topics. You talk about <coughs> storytelling, you talk about getting to the point, persuade, that's that sort of thing. So this is good. And I kept going through it. I kept thinking, I really want to learn how to create a good speech. And, and, and then yeah, I just that for three years. And then five years later, I suddenly started thinking, now wait a minute. I, I, I wanted to learn how to create a good speech. And, and so far, I, I know how to deliver a speech. I know a lot of speaking topics. And if I ever forget for, figure out what a good speech is, I'll, I'll be able to deliver it great. But I didn't know. 
And so, and so I thought, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just wasting my time. Maybe I'm just wasting my time. Maybe some people can create good speeches. You know those people, right? And, and other people can't. And maybe I'm one of those people who can't. I just can't create a good speech, and it's just not going to happen. I waste my time. I should just stop. Because it's silly. I'm going to tell this over and over again. Think I'm going to create a good speech. It's not going to happen ever. I'm just. It's, it's not going to happen. I just forget it. I'm not going to do it. And so I just, I, I quit. I left. I just went away and, and I left Toastmasters. Now, while I was in Toastmasters, I had found this guy, Bob. He's a tall guy, blonde hair, nice guy, professional speaker. But most importantly, he really knows his stuff. And the thing about Bob is I bump into him in pretty much strange place. You ever have somebody like that you bump into just kind of, a, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I bump into like Starbucks. So they're going to Starbucks one day and says, Tim, hey, great to see you. I haven't seen you at Toastmasters for a while. Are you okay? I said, Bob, I'm not okay, Bob. I'm just, I'm not okay. I came to Toastmasters to learn how to create a good speech. I haven't been able to do that. I'm just frustrated, so I just left. Well, Tim, I think you ought to go back to Toastmasters. But if all you want to do is create a good speech, it's really pretty simple. You just have to understand the four acts of your speech. Wait a minute, Bob. You say that there, there's a process, a step-by-step -step process I can work to create a good speech consistently? So like, yeah, Tim, it's the four acts. And then Bob went on to explain to me these Starbucks sessions, these four acts, and how they work. So today you're going to learn about the four acts. You're going to learn about the A act, the thing you do at the very beginning of your speech that's so important. Then you're going to learn about the C act, the thing that makes it possible for you to continue speaking and get you speaking a lot. And then the T Act. Now this is something most speakers leave out. Put this in your eyes. Well, thank you. And then finally the S Act. The thing you do at the very end of your speech. That, again, most speakers resist. But once you do this, you'll be so much, so much better. And it all begins with the A Act. Now, the A Act is something that, you know speakers don't have it. They haven't gotten it. And you see, this seems familiar. Have you ever heard a speech where you think it? This is this is really really not it. And you see, the speech goes on. You think this is not good. And the speech goes like this is really not good. <laughs> and it keeps going on, and you're just like bored. And it keeps on going. Have you had that experience? Yeah, never in Toastmasters, right? But but somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. You go and you're like, oh, come on, please, somebody. You know, it's me or the speaker. Somebody's got to give here. And that's for speakers who don't get the A act. Because once you understand the A act and how it works, your audience reaction is different. Your audience reaction is, well, tell me more. And tell me more again. And tell me more again. All the way through your speech, because you understand the A act and how it works. And the A act is simply about attention. Attention. The A Act is about attention. 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 Thank you for giving me your attention. So there I was at Starbucks learning from Fox. Okay, Tim, you know, you've got to learn about attention. You've got to get the audience's attention when we're up there, too. Okay, Bob, how do I get the audience's attention? How do I really get and keep the audience's attention? And Bob told me something that if you use this one tip, you will double, even triple, your speaking abilities. Just this one tip. All you have to use. Double and triple your speaking ability. He said, Tim, when you're speaking, make sure you use the you. Use the you when you're speaking. Some of you might be thinking, use the you. Is that like use the sheep? <laughs> Thank you for getting that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Is that like some sort of foreign thing? May we, may you, use the you, some sort of French thing? Well, what the heck are you talking about, Tim? I get it, because I was confused too. So here's the thing. For a while, just put aside use you. Promise me to come back to it and just think about this. Have you ever been on stage speaking in front of people, and at some point in your presentation, you realized you were losing their attention? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know this is like tension like this, and you see it start to go like this, yeah. and you keep doing what you're doing, right? Maybe faster or desperately, <laughs> and it keeps going like this, and pretty soon it seems to like hit the ground and keep going. And you give it a subterranean speech. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
some point you lose the audience. It keeps on going. No matter what you do, it just keeps on going down. You don't know why. Or maybe you don't relate to that. Maybe you relate more to this. Have you ever been at a speech with a speaker? And at some point, you just start getting this real strong urge to call people you haven't called in a very <laughs> long time. You know, you get this urge like call and say, hey, Steve, how are you? 15 years, huh? Wow. What am I doing? Got a really boring speaker here. No, now's a great time. Great time. Yeah, how are the kids? Huh? The dog? Yeah, okay. Maybe you're not that rude. Then we just kind of pull up an iPad at Samsung, you start looking at the New York Times saying, oh, look at this, hey, stock market crash. At <laughs> some point, the speaker lost your attention, you never got it back. And you just do anything you could to stay away from that speaker and get away from the speaker. Have that okay. Some of you are saying you've been that speaker who's the one that, I don't think you've seen the speaker like that. So I imagine you sympathized and said, I'm so sorry for you. Now you pull out your phone and crank it out. It's everywhere. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you use the words I and we a lot in your speech, it's like you're forcing your audience to look through a window. It's like you're forcing your audience to look through a window. You use the words I and we a lot in your speech. And the audience will look through the window for a while. They look through the window and say, I get it. The speaker is talking about this and their friends and what they used to do and their interactions and what's real. Hey, I get it. I get it. But the thing is, it's like all window shopping. The audience looks through the window for a while, and then at some moment, they look away from your window. You know how it is with window shopping. You can't just keep on window shopping. At some point, you've got to look away from the window. You've got to look at something else. You've been down in Marshall Field, seeing the different windows. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. You gotta go from window to window to window to window. You can't just stay in the same window. So that's the thing. When they look away from the window, they're gone. But something happens when you use the word you. When you use the word you, it's like the audience is right there on stage with you. The audience next to the speaker, the speaker is next to the audience. Everything connects in a magical way. Who was a Mark Brown speech? Okay. How many times did Mark Brown use the word you in the speech? Several. Several. Two, three, five, bazillion. <laughs> yeah. All the time, right? All the time. He is so aware of the audience, as all professional speakers are. And it's just by using the word you. Did you feel like he was talking to you? You felt personally connected to it? Now, you said we a couple of times referred to Toastmasters. But how would you have felt if Mark Brown went up there and said, well, I'm doing this, and I'm the great world champion speaker, and I'm wonderful here, and I know how you should do it, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and you should too! Like most Toastmasters speakers. <laughs> how do you feel then? Not the same, right? It's a whole different thing. Use the you. So I started doing that. I started using the word you. There's a seat right there. Yeah, I have. Oh, you're kind of full standing there? I'll lose them. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, I can, I'll, standing room only. I get to say that. Never <laughs> that. I now get to say it. This is wonderful. I started using the you. Using the word you in my speeches. I discovered all oh, the pressure was off. It was like a conversation. It's like having a conversation with the audience. You know those conversations where you just talk back and forth and everything's easy? Just imagine if you're on stage and all you're doing is having a conversation, not the pressure, not you need to perform, you need to perform. No, 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 you just use the you. Have you ever, did you ever, could you ever? And all of a sudden, really felt differently. You got to struggle a little bit and you know you're going to do well up there, right? As opposed to, uh, I don't speak. Yes! So everything started coming together and then quickly started to connect with the audience just by using the word you. It's magical, it's simple, it's powerful. And when you start doing that, you'll notice the same thing yourself. When you get out on stage and you start using the you, you'll discover a whole new, simple, powerful connection with the audience. Because all of a sudden, everybody will be connected with you. You notice quickly that connection is made. You notice as you go through your speech, everything just kind of falls together. And as you start doing that on stage, you start doing that in your life. Start addressing people around you and be aware of all the time you use the you and how intimate that is. With your family, with your mother, your father, your, your uncle. If you like your uncle. If you don't like your uncle, then call him weed. <laughs> <laughs>
you'll notice that difference. With your boss, hey you, how are you doing? As opposed to Mr. Whatever. It'll create this intimacy, this bond. They will give you a raise. So what's? Your lovers, your relationships, your significant other, use the word you, and you find it brings everybody together. It's that power. That's the A act of attention. Use the you. Now, about now, maybe you're wondering, Tim, okay, great. I got the audience's attention, but how do I keep attention on my own speech? Because I got the audience's attention, but I'm not sure if I got my own attention on it. Mm -hmm. That brings up the C act. The C act. Now, C act is something that maybe you've experienced this in your Toastmaster meetings. Have you ever been in a meeting, Toastmaster meeting, where you either are the Toastmaster or the Toastmaster is going up to a speaker and they're supposed to speak and they say something like, uh, you're scheduled to speak today, so uh, what's your speech title? They say, that was today? <laughs> that was today I was supposed to speak? No, I gotta research my topic more. I've got more studying to do, I got things to do, I'm busy at work, and I gotta go. <laughs> or maybe I just go up to somebody and say, you know, you haven't spoken in a while. You've got to spoke like you'll be speaking four months down the road. How can you speak today? Well, today I need those four months. I need every one of those four months to really practice prepare and make sure everything is going okay. Or maybe you know say, you know, you haven't ever spoken at the club. Today's your great day, we've got it open. Would you like to speak? Look, I'm going to tell you when I speak, and I'll decide when I speak, and it's not going to be today. <laughs> you ever had that experience at your club? You have one, one, okay, one, all right. One honest person, two, three, maybe four, okay, all right. Have you ever done that? Yes. Yeah. You ever done that? Yeah. I'm still you, doing that. You're still doing that. There you go, exactly. You're still doing that. You go in there like, well, I came here to Toastmasters to spend money. Maybe it's a donation program. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that too. I first started. I, just did it. I, I thought, what, what do you speak about? So such a big issue. And that brings up the C Act. But here's the thing. Once you understand the C Act and how the C Act works, you have a different reaction. You go in there and you go to that Toastmaster and you say, hey, I got a speech today. And if I'm not speaking in this club, I got to speak at some other club. If I'm going to speak because I have things I got to get out of. <laughs> I just <can> say. <laughs> That's for speakers to get the C act. The C act is simply about your content. Your content. The C act is about your content. Content. Thank you. Just the way we practice it. Content. So. There I was back at Starbucks getting my regular course from Bob at Starbucks with a nice little latte there. Temp content is very important. What you speak about is very crucial when you get up there. Well, Bob, look, there's all these different stuff on the internet. You go on the internet, there's like 259 things to think about. There's all these different books about all these speaking books. What are, how do I decide what content's right for me? The Tim, actually, it's pretty simple. All you gotta remember is find your passion. Find your speech. Find your passion, find your speech. <coughs> Think about that. Find your passion, find your speech. Maybe you can give an example of this and it's not simply a toastmaster situation, non toastmaster situation. Uh, have you ever been to a bar? Don't worry, I'm not going to card anybody. I'm just asking, have you ever been to a bar? Yes. Tim's been to a bar? Okay. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, there he is. Yes, there. That's good. If you've ever been to a bar, you know there's some people who've been around the bar for a long time, and they're very comfortable in that bar, kind of the old standard person, you know. And they kind of greet people when they come in. I say things like, hi, you're new here. H have you ever seen her by the time around the world? <laughs> and I went to Paris and Rome. It was the most wonderful time. I can tell you that. First I went, can't understand a word this person is saying. But they got passion, right? They got passion. <laughs> yeah, they got, the, they got a passion going on. You got passion. You just keep talking and talking and talking and talking. It's just amazing. So think back on the things you're passionate about. It's not so much 
about talking about yourself. Now, some people are passionate talking about themselves. I know you people, right? You know who you are. Other people can point you out, right? <laughs> some people are passionate talking about themselves. But here's the thing is that if that's not you, that's okay. What are you passionate about? What do you like to read? What do you like to do? What do you like to think about? What do you like to dream? What fulfills you? What excites you? What gets you going? What lifts you up? That's what you should talk about. It's that simple. And if you do that, you figure out what that passion is, you can just keep on talking and talking and talking. That will have to drag you off of that lectern. <laughs> no, you're finished. No, I want one more point. <laughs> because you're talking about something that touches your heart, that gets you going, that gets you excited, that lifts you up. It's just amazing what happens when you talk about your at some point, some of you are nodding and say, Tim, I know it is my passion. I'm going to go back there and speak those people to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some of you are saying, Tim, I'm just still not, a little, not sure. That's okay. It's cool. Here's what you do. If you don't want your passion, just go to a friend, go to somebody who knows you well, somebody who's been around you a lot. Call them a passion pal. Uh -huh. Just go to that passion pal and ask them, what do I like to talk about? Uh -huh. Say, you know what you want to talk about? It's that subject you're always talking about. So don't worry. If you don't need your passion, your friends do. <laughs> and once you start getting that going, you get that passion, you get that excitement, everything comes together. So I start doing that. Great. Find my passion. I discover I'm passionate about helping other people talk. That's right, I'm the guy. I'm the guy responsible, I admit it. And putting more and more speakers out there, blame me. I'm passionate about helping other people talk. And because I'm passionate about that, that's what I want to talk about. That's what I did talk about. Ken didn't like it, but I talked about it anyway. <laughs> Kept on going and talking about it because that was my passion. And then I quickly made connections. I talked about something I believed in, and the same thing will happen to you. You go out there and you talk about something you're passionate about, something you're excited about. You just kind of sweep the audience along. You walk out there and say, let me tell you something about what's going on. Say, yes, yes. And you make that quick, deep, strong, powerful connection you always wanted to make. Because you're talking about something you care about, something you love, something that's really deep inside you. The same thing goes. Once you start doing that on the stage, you take that passion in your life. You take that passion in your family. You take that passion in your mother, your father, your sister, your son, your aunt, your uncle. You take that passion in your job. You take that passion everywhere. Because that's what drives you, that's what gets you going. Find places to use that passion in your daily work, in your daily job, and wherever it is. Nothing the matter with working for money. And that's it. You just got a job. But find a place to use and apply that passion in your life, and your life will be so much better. So much more powerful. So much more meaningful to you. It's a sea act of content. Content. Find your passion. Find your speech. What about now? Everything. Okay, Tim. All right, I get it. Okay, tension. Use the U. Content, find your passion, find your speech. But what do you do with that passion? Where does that passion go? How do you use that in a speech? And that brings up the T act. Now, the T act is something that, well, if you don't have it in your speech, maybe you've heard these sort of speeches. Have you ever heard a speech? And afterwards, it's a really passionate speech. And afterwards, you say, wow! <coughs> That is a great speech, and you're so wrapped up, and you're so excited, and you're so ready to go. You think I'm excited, I'm passionate, and I have no clue what I'm going to do now. <laughs> <laughs> I am all wrapped up and nowhere to go. You ever felt experience that in a speech? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's why speakers don't get the T act. Once a speaker gets the T act, what happens is you start this audience reaction comes different, more like, I got this passion, and now I know what to do. And take all that passion and bring it down and bring it into my rally, and there it is, and I'm going to use it and apply it. That's the T act. The T act is about technique. T E C H N I Q U E. Those nasty words. Hard to spell. We get the spelling things sometimes. Technique. T act is about technique. Technique, exactly. Technique. So again, back at Starbucks, getting my regular dose of 
latte and wisdom. Sand Fox, tell you got a technique. You get out there, how to, how to take that passion and really bring it into the real world. Okay, Bob, how do you do that? How do you take passion and bring it to the world? How do you really get that across to your audience in an effective way? So, Tim, there's a speaker, Craig Valentine. By the way, Craig, anyone see Craig Valentine? Oh, yeah. He's there. Pretty passionate, effective yes. guy, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, he's got this thing, but the phrases, he's got this thing that he creates a phrase that stays. He creates a phrase that stays. The ten words or less that stick in your audience's mind. Ten words or less that stick in your audience's mind. It's a phrase that stays. Use that. Because here's the thing. Here's the problem. When you're up there speaking, have you ever noticed that after a speech, you ever heard a speech afterwards, and, and you're thinking like, okay, well, what was the last thing? What, what, what really went on there? And you know it's good stuff. But like, what am I supposed to do now? What, what am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to take with this? What do I do with all this stuff? You ever felt like that after a speech? You don't know? Yeah, exactly. Because that's the challenge of getting your audience to remember things. Getting your audience to remember things is a huge, huge challenge. That's the goal. So you want a phrase that stays. So now you think, okay, Tim, what the heck is a phrase that stays? What would be a phrase that stays? How would that work? It's a good question. I've actually been hearing phrase that stays all the way through this presentation. All the way through it, from the very beginning. I'm going to test it out on you just to see how this works. I'm going to give part of a phrase, and you complete it, okay? A act of attention. You want to use the you. you. Thank you. C act of content. You find your passion. You find your speech. speech. Exactly. <coughs> I didn't teach you that before, right? No. No, it was coached to say that. But it's in your head. It's in your head now. It's going to stay there. No question about it. A phrase that stays. Tremendously powerful. Okay, Tim, you can do that. I get it. Yeah, you. Yeah, well, whatever. You. But do people do that? Do people actually do that in the real world? Well, yes. Yes, they do. In fact, I think the liberty of taking down a few phrases that stays from Mark Brown. See if you remember some of these. Well, first of all, eight ways. A-T-E ways. <laughs> can remember that? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to stick with you. He had some other good ones. He said... Be a part, not a pest. Yeah. yeah. Who, who, who would that really stuck with? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you the part or the pest? Man? <laughs> <laughs> Said, person before the role. Person before the role. Who, who did that really affect? Who really got? Cynthia? Yeah. Certain things, see these phrases that stays, and then stick with afterwards you're gonna use that, right? You're gonna share that with people? Yes. And say I'm making a person before the role. Say that to your boss, <laughs> mumbling your breath after they <laughs> <laughs> Mark the milestones. I kinda like that. You ever find you're getting older, the, the things about milestones and things like that start coming to your head more? Yeah. After I passed 50, it's like, mark the milestones. Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. We're starting out. And celebrate successes. Celebrate successes. There's a lot of things said in that speech, right? But what are you going to take away with it? Really? A bunch of eights, yeah, but celebrate successes, mark them out. Those are going to stick with you for a life. You that powerful. Get a phrase that stays, ten words or less that stick in your audience's mind, and people will walk out of your speech saying, I remember that speech, I love that speech, that was great, because they'll remember your phrase. Just start doing that, creating phrase that stays. And you know it works, you walk in and say, hey, I got a phrase, yeah. I'm the only one here who got a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Simple is powerful, it puts a little stress in your step. And then quickly making that connection. And you know you make that connection because people can repeat your phrase back. Hey, Tim, I'm using the you. Say, like, good for you. Keep it up. I found my passion. I found my speech. Wonderful. I got a phrase that stays. 
And the same thing's going to happen to you. Once you start doing this, that takes a little work, mind you. It will take some work. You know Rhymer.com? You go to Rhymer.com, check it out. It's a really wonderful site. Hey. It'll help you beginning rhyme, end rhymes, and not really rhyme so much. It's just finding really cool words that kind of go together. You can take a look down the word list and see how the, like the beginning letter matches this letter. It's, it's really a cool site. But create those phrases and stays. And you'll find the same thing. You'll be strutting up there and say, yeah, I got a phrase. Nobody else is afraid that I got a phrase. And people start to think, that was fantastic. That was you? That was you? With that phrase? Wow, that's incredible. And people will be repeating the phrase back to you and say, hey, you know, I love that phrase you created. That's so much helping me. And once you get those phrases and stays, start taking them into your life. Same sort of thing. Share those phrases with the people you, you love, you care about. Your wife, husband, uncle, with your boss. Wouldn't it be cool if your boss came to you and said, you know, I love that phrase. I want to use it in front of the executive board. And said, yeah, just making sure you put my name and trademark that. <laughs> phrase that stays. Once you start doing that in your life, you bring it back to the stage. You'll be such an incredible, powerful, wonderful speaker. And you've only taken three steps. Only made three changes. Attention, content, technique, and already you're a great speaker. Congratulations. That's technique. Technique is all about a phrase that stays. Ten words or less that stick in your audience's mind. Well, now comes the final act. The S act. The closing act. It's where the curtain's coming down, and everything's going to be wrapped up in the end, everything's going on. It's the part where the audience starts collecting their belongings all around. You know what you do. Everybody's just about ready to leave, but it's the most important act of all, the S act. And you know speakers don't have the S act, or don't really wear the S act. Maybe you've ever had this happen where you, you leave a, this speech, you go from a speech, and you have this sort of reaction. You know, I, I never did that before. I, I really, really don't plan to do that anywhere in the future. And frankly, I can't be bothered to do that right now. <laughs> you ever have that reaction in speech? I know what you're talking about. I do your technique, but thank you, but no thank you. I don't do <laughs> stupid techniques. Get away. However, if the speaker gets the S act, the reaction's a little bit different. The reaction's more like, well, I haven't been doing this up to now, and tomorrow's too late. I gotta do this now. Right now. It's the S act. The S act is about selling. Sell. Yes, act is about selling. Selling, you bet. That's the thing the speakers hate the most. Selling. So my final latte lesson from Bob is like, Tim, you gotta sell. It's important to sell. Like, I don't want to sell. I don't want to be a used car salesman up there. It's no fun. Well, okay, Tim, but if you don't sell, I mean, why are people gonna do what you say if you don't sell? simple way to sell. Tim, here's the thing to keep in mind. Last things last. Last things last. The last thing you say will last in the audience is mine. And if you make that thing a simple next step, people are likely to do it. Just give them a simple next step. <coughs> And the last thing said, you try to remember them, and you start to think about, well, what really, how did that affect me? How did that get me in the speech? Your reactions are like, well, speaker's glad they've met me. It's good. It's nice weather we're having. They want to be invited back. Um, they're feeling happy. They're, they're in a good mood. Um, they, they really, really, really are happy to be here. It's the last thing you hear, right? That's what you remember. The very last thing you hear. But if the last thing you hear is a simple next step, aren't you likely to do it? Now at this point you're thinking, okay, Tim, wait a minute, that's not selling, that's remembering. Nothing to do with selling. Selling is you get, hey, buy this stuff now! 
Remembering is like, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. Well, think about this. If you go to any presentation, anything, wouldn't you like to get something out of it after you leave? How often does it happen? Sometimes. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But if you heard, the last thing you heard, say, look, if you want to improve yourself, this is one simple thing. Are you likely to do it? Try it out. Hey, it doesn't work, forget it. I'm not going to do that anymore. You're an idiot, forget it, moron. It does work, you say, okay, I can do that. I'll try it. I'll see if that works. So last things last. And the thing about last things last is that You want to make sure to keep the steps simple. Make sure to keep it simple. Quite often, people do things like the last thing you hear is like, okay, then you want to make sure that you have your back turned and you got to be facing the moon and a 45 degree angle and make sure yeah. the apogee is coming down. You're like, wait a minute, it's too complex. I can't do all that. You ever heard a speech with something really complex to do and you just got completely lost in it? <laughs> yeah. I can't do all that stuff. But if it's simple, if you just get it, you're like, oh. Okay, I get it. At least you understand it. That's a starting point, right? Simple. And then, next step. Quite often, speakers get so far involved with all the stuff they're talking about, they don't give you a next step. It's like, the 37 steps to happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and you're thinking, 37 steps? I'm happier not going through these 37 <laughs> steps <laughs> than I would be if I tried to struggle through each one of them. No. Just give a next step. Just say, smile. You can write that down for you. Simple way to be happy to smile. Simple next step. Let's start doing that. Remembering of last things last. Be aware of last things last. The importance of last things last. Started to really make that connection. People afterwards would start doing the things I was talking about, which for a professional speech coach is so exciting. People actually do the things you're talking about. And once you start using that technique, start using that last things last, be aware of it. And a simple next step, I'll start doing things for you too. I'll start going back and saying, you know, I use that technique you're talking about. Boy, it made a huge change in my life. My life is so much better. Thank you for giving me that technique. I just transformed everything. And then as always, the stage is only the starting point. The stage is only the starter. It's about your life. It's about how you can use that. Who in your life really needs to have a next step now? How can you make it simple for them? Simple for them to like really improve, so they really get better, so they really develop. How can you make that happen? Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's in your relationships. Got a problem here is a simple next thing we can do to, to improve it, to develop it. Or maybe just leave boss. We got, we got a problem <coughs> here. Here's a simple next step I can take, or we can take, to make things better. Make it a simple next step, and then you go down the road to improve it. And things get better and better and better. Okay, now, just to go over all the things you learned about today. You learned about the A act of. Attention. Attention, exactly. Now, attention is all about using the you. Using the you. Because using the word I and we, it's like you're forcing your audience to look through a window. It's like you're forcing your audience to look through a window. So the audience gets it. We understand what's going on through the window. But the thing is, they look out of the window, different window, and they're gone. Keep them at that attention. So you use the word you. Because it connects people, it brings people in. It's simple, it's powerful, it's amazing. When you start doing it, you'll just be stunned about the way it happens. You can double, even triple your effectiveness just by using the word you. As you notice, Mark Brown he used the you many, many, many times. Professional speakers do that, but you don't need to be a professional to do it. You just have to be aware of it. You have to be aware of others and aware of others around you. So many times speakers on stage get so caught up in their own act, in their own world. Uh, professional uh, speaker Craig Bellman talks about being stuck in the story. You ever been stuck in your story as a speaker? It's all about, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing all these sort of things, you know? And the audience just maybe nods, maybe your eyes glaze over, maybe they go to sleep. Do you notice that curiosity? You, think, go to sleep. you notice, okay, good. But if you use the you, it's like they're right there in the story with you. And it's really simple. You talk about things are going on, things are going on, then you step out of the story. Have you ever had it happen? Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever known that? Have you ever felt that? And that gets people, then you step back, then nah, I was doing blah, 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 that's right. 
tension using the U. Simple, powerful technique. And then the C act of content. Content. C act is? Content. Content. Kind of find your passion, find your speech. Because if you're passionate about something, you're excited about something, you're really <coughs> interested in it, you can, you can talk on and on and on about it. It's like at a bar. You got that one guy. He talks on and on and on. You can't understand what they're saying, but boy, they're passionate. They're excited. It's that sort of a feeling. The good news is you don't have to be drunk. Now, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't always help for understanding. Video yourself to see whether you do better drunk or I'm Forget all that. <laughs> Find your passion, find your speech. Because when you know what you're passionate about, you can go down and think about your childhood, your early times. When you were a kid, what really got you, what was really exciting, what you thought, well, man, when I grow up, I'm going to do this. You can talk about that, that excitement, that feeling. Think about it with your family, what really helps you connect with your family. Think about what helps you connect with the people around you, the people you relate to. That passion, that excitement, that's, that's going to drive your speech. It's so often the challenge in Toastmasters is so much that you're afraid to talk about what you really care about. If you talk about what you really care about, you really feel inside you, you find the words just flow. That flows. I said sometimes you may have to tear people away from the lectern physically, drag them away from the lectern, but that's much better because phrase it, it's not good to have a donation uh, given to Toastmasters all the time that you're not using. Right? It's not a health club. <laughs> find your passion, find your speech, you find what you're really excited about, really interested in the sea act of content. And, by the way, if you don't know your passion, start getting a passion, pal. Your friends know. Believe me, they know what you're passionate about. You may have no clue, but they'll definitely know. They'll definitely tell you. And then comes the T act of technique. 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 Thank you. The T act is? Technique. All right. I like the early, but I like also the big choir singing together. It's a magical feeling. Technique, and technique is simply the how-to. Because so often, you've seen this in speakers, that you talk about this passion, you go excited, you're like, oh, this is so great, like, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> don't do that. that. That can hurt your audience. It's, it's physically, have you ever felt that, that physical pain where you're like, I'm really excited, I don't know what to do. It's like, oh, man, it's just a horrible feeling to be out there, to be all the excitement and not ever really all rubbed up and no place to go. Oh, when you were a teenager, you probably knew what all that sort of stuff was. I gotta do it. I'm not sure what to do now. I'm excited about it. <laughs> technique. And technique is as simple as making sure you have a phrase that stays. Phrase that stays. Ten words or less to stick in your own spine. This will take work. Like Rhymer.com. You haven't gone to Rhymer. You haven't. Are, you may be surfing Rhymer.com right now. I don't know, but. If you go to it, you'll see it's just interesting. It's called end rhymes, beginning rhymes, middle rhymes. Just a whole new way to think about things. Because if people can remember your message, they can do your message. People can't remember what you're saying, they're not going to do it. Does that make sense? Yes. Backwards, people are like, I was really passionate, but I'm not sure quite what it was. Oh, I'm going to do it anyway. That's not mm -hmm. Man, wish it happened. So make sure you've got that phrase that stays. It's really going to stick in the mind. And I just got to go back to Mark Brown's books. They're so great. The eight ways. Be a part, not a pest. Person before the role. Mark the milestones. <coughs> Celebrate successes. Just so great. You notice how passionate. You can hear Mark Brown saying them all over again, right? Technique. Get a phrase that stays. Ten words or less to stick in your audience's mind at Rhymer.com. And then finally, the S Act of selling. Selling. Last chance. The S Act is? Selling. 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 Great. I was no more of that. So three the whole thing. <laughs> selling. The simple way to sell is remember last things last. Last thing you say last in the audience's mind, give them a simple next step. And remember, it's selling because the reason your audience comes to you, the reason your audience hears you, now outside of Toastmasters, maybe even in Toastmasters, because they really think you've got something special. You've got something to share. You've got something they really want to know, but they've got to know. They've got to be able to remember. They've got to know exactly what to do. And you sell them on that by saying, here's a simple thing you can do, and it'll transform you and make you better. And then you just go build and develop and grow from there. It's that simple. It's that powerful of so, last thing, last, give them a simple next step. All right.
covered a lot of things today. Don't expect you to remember everything. If you remember nothing else, just remember this. If you want to double, even triple, your speaking effectiveness, all you have to do is use the word you in your speeches. If you have a bunch of eyes and we just sprinkle them with you all the way through, you know what I'm talking about? And use it as much as you can, everywhere you can, in the beginning, in the middle, at the end, all the way through. Do an I you count. How many eyes you, how many you's you do? Make sure you have more you's than eyes. So U-I ratio should be a high number. So remember, the very next speech that you do, always remember, use the you. you. that you have and if you didn't get a chance to sign up to receive his speech tips uh, I can make sure that you receive that so that you can receive daily emails with his speech tips I have it thank you and then finally uh, Mark provides speech coaching and if you have any interest regarding that he would be happy to speak with you about by the way I also things. provide speech coaching too Mark's good oh I'm sorry Get stuff <laughs> 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 Mark Brown that That's I had Mark on my head. <laughs> 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 if you didn't get a chance to sign the sign-in sheet today, I have that here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all.